Welcome to another episode of PDTV. Hi, my name is Justin Brooksby. In 2019, UEN became an ISTE certified authorized provider, meaning that we are able to teach the official ISTE certification program. All UEN instructors and many district leaders received specialized training from ISTE in order to do this. Teachers who complete the program receive this internationally recognized certification receive an Utah Education Technology endorsement and receive university credits. Over the years, we have seen a shifting spotlight in the way students should learn. This went from a teacher-driven model to student-centered and then finally student-driven personalized learning environment. The ISTE teacher certification is about training educators to help students find and understand information for themselves. This is not only about the best ways for students to learn, but also how to integrate technology and transform the learning process. Today we're going to interview a few teachers that have gone through the ISTE certification program. I'm interviewing Matt Winters, who is one of the first Utah educators to go through the certification program. I'm very interested to learn your thoughts on the certification discuss what was taught in it and how you've been able to apply it in your school so far. So thanks for being here today. Happy to be here, I'm excited. So there's a lot of talk about the changing classroom in this um, ISTE certification program. So I'm interested to, know, interested to know what you have been doing already using technology to personalize and deepen learning for your students. Well, I, I've been hitting a lot of different things in my school. So I'm in an interesting role being an ed tech coach and being a teacher. Mm -hmm. So in my classroom, I'm helping a lot of students get into using better sources, using like Utah's online library, and really trying to find topics that help them out, being kind of hitting that digital citizenship role that we're talking about in ISTE certification, a little bit more heavily and a little bit more deliberately. But around my school, I'm teaching students, or teaching the teachers subtly how to use the ISTE standards in their different classes, especially with personalization, and kind of helping them build curriculum that helps and reinforce um, that personalized educational role as well, which is great. That's awesome. So after going through the certification program, did you change anything that you were doing or did you just keep doing it the same or what changes did you have in the classroom? Well, what was nice is that like when I, when I was in the training, I realized very quickly that a lot of it dovetailed with things that I was already doing. So it was really easy to kind of jump in and go, oh, okay, this fits here and this fits here and I can augment, in my, augment my teaching with digital citizenship here and that sort of thing. Um, but what was one of the most immediate things is I taught at a conference in the beginning of August and as part of the conference, I had to present all these sessions. I applied the ISTE standards, the student standards, to those presentations, and it took me an extra five minutes, but I had this framework to explain to teachers, this is a way to, a framework for bringing technology into the classroom deliberately and responsibly, which was great for me to share with the teachers. So these are just small tweaks that you need to make to what you're currently doing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't this complete overall overhaul of the entire way you were teaching in the classroom or anything like that. No, and that's the feeling I got from ISTE certification all the way through was, we're not asking you to redo everything about education. It's about taking small bits and chunks of things that you are already doing and doing well and augmenting that, that goodness with more goodness. In the certification program, we look at a lot of the ISTE certification standards and there's standards for teachers and there's standards for students. Um, how has your role as an educator changed when you apply these ISTE standards for students? So as I've been working with the students' uh, standards, a lot of them, again, I felt like I already was doing most, like yeah. a lot of it, not most of it, but a lot of it. And so it was nice to put a name or a set of standards to something I was doing in my classroom already. Um, the one that really has helped me and I focus on a lot is digital citizenship. How do we become, how do we help students become better learners and users of this digital world that we're asking them to be a part of? And so being more deliberate with that and showing them how to cite sources earlier in the year, how to responsibly navigate the internet, but then also how to talk about social media in a, in a positive way, and then getting them to share that with other people around the school. And so one of the things I'm doing right off the bat this year is having them go through a self-publication unit. So we're, they're creating stories, we're putting them on paper, we're printing them and publishing them, and then we're gonna talk about the idea of 
how, how would you do this on the internet? What's the purpose of this? And what happens if you steal somebody else's self-publicated work or published work? And that gets them into that structure of learning that, oh wow, this is something really important to me. And so I love the digital citizenship standards for the students. And I think that's gonna be something that's really important for me over the next couple of years. It was interesting to think about that because you know, when we were students in the classroom, digital citizenship wasn't really even anything we yeah. had to learn about. And now it's something that students are faced with on a day-to-day -day basis um, mm -hmm. in school and when they graduate and get out into the real world. Yeah, you have kids that are um, spending most of their time on, in a digital realm where they don't, maybe don't know the person they're talking to and they need to know what's going on with that. But also on top of that, they need to know citations, they need to know how to navigate websites, and then just how to share properly and publish things. Um, it's the future. And this is helping me to illustrate that future to, to students. So now that you've completed the certification, the in-class and online portion of that, uh, what, what's your, been your favorite part of the certification training so far? For me, it was being in class, mm -hmm. meeting the instructors, but then also realizing that there is a community in the state of teachers who are willing to take, because I did mine during the summer, yeah. um, that are willing to take two days during the summer on a Thursday and Friday, pay their own way, and go and be a part of this class and then be so excited to share and laugh and enjoy the concepts that were going on there. But then also beyond that too, so a lot of the people that were at my table, there was one person from my school district, but the rest of the people were not. I'm now friends with them on Twitter and we communicate, we share, and I'm really excited about continuing that relationship because I think that when we look at the ISTE standards or we look at anything with um, kind of technology and education, if we're not sharing and collaborating and working together as a community, we're not going to see real change. Today we're interviewing Christina Guevara, who is the one of the first Utah educators to go through our ISTE certification program. And we're here at uh, Spectrum Charter Academy, yes. is that right? And That's right. we are interested to kind of talk with you today and find out how you've been using technology in the past and maybe how you're using it differently going through the ISTE certification program. So. Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, technology for our students has always been a vehicle as far as like assistive technology that we identify in their IEPs. Um, but as far as moving into the space of blended learning, um, we do have one-to-one uh, -one Chromebooks for every student in our high school. And that has really been kind of our primary mode of technology use. Having gone through the ISTE certification now, I'm, my, my vision of technology use and integration is so much wider. Um, really helping our students to be empowered with their learning. Um, I think for a lot of our kids, choice has not been a big factor in their educational career having an IEP. A lot of things get decided for them, and so putting that opportunity in their hands has been like one of those bigger changes we've been able to see. So what you talk about empowering the student, and that was a big part of the ISTE certification. Mm -hmm. What kind of things have you thought about doing more of to empower students in their own education process? So at the high school level, um, we have a big push and, and kind of everything sits on the foundation of transition. Like what activities are we going to give them exposure to so that they're ready for the adult world that probably has not even been designed, but it's waiting for them. Um, so giving them chances to be hands-on with their learning, um, physically building things. Um, we have 3D projectors, um, we have 3D printers, and so really giving them the chance to interact with the technology that's actually in use. Um, the other opportunities we provide are internships out in the community, and so really bringing that all into a single space where their introduction to those opportunities happens in that blended learning environment. So. Um, really reassuring parents and students it's not just a computer in your hands but rather the computer is kind of that lens we're going to help you to see the world a little bit wider. That, that instrument to, yes. to accomplish what you're trying to reach. That's so great and also in the ISTE certification we talk a lot about how the teacher's role is shifting in yes. education Maybe you can talk a little bit about that shifting role of the teacher. Yes, so I have um, an amazing teacher and their experience last year with blended learning was a little bit reserved, um, so much so that at kind of the beginning point of the school year, there was an expression of like, I'm just gonna teach, like this jumping on a, a digital platform is not conducive to my students right now and they really need to know the content. Um, and I, I kind of just sat with that information and that feedback from them and really had 
every opportunity I could to really kind of discuss and talk through that personalization, but I can't get to everybody and I can't get to everybody and saying, well, I mean, if we were using a digital platform, you might be able to make some assignments and you might be able to have students work a little more independently and kind of own some of their learning. Um, that teacher actually went through a course this summer to learn about um, Canvas, our learning platform, and really just stepped into that designer space um, in their role. And now um, there's been not just a shift in the design of instruction, but in that teacher's mindset, really now advocating for that personalization. And um, it's gone beyond just, I can build a course online, but rather now I'm seeing the students in a different light and I'm seeing all the possibilities that are available for them. Yeah, we do see a lot of hesitation from teachers to jump into using technology. And a lot of times yes. they're hesitant to do it because they may feel that they don't have the skills to do it. And one of the big things about ISTE also is that um, teachers shouldn't feel afraid to do that. They should almost look for opportunities to learn with the students. What do you think is the key factor to get a teacher that is not wanting to use technology um, to using technology to empower the students? Like, What's the key there? Um, I think if I could pinpoint it, um, it's, it's really meeting the teacher where they are and, and respecting the experience that they bring to the table, um, really helping them to highlight the work they're already doing. Um, for my staff, we actually had a, a really great aha moment all together when we were talking about personalized and blended learning. and. Um, I didn't want it to be, oh, here's another initiative, here's another something we're doing. And so kind of in the same conversation, we talked about like, so what is PBL? And then immediately flipped back to, you've been writing IEPs for years and years for our students. You've been individualizing their instruction already. Can I provide you with a vehicle that'll help you get there a little bit smoother? And I think making that connection for them onto some of the knowledge they already had, kind of scaffolding their learning and growth, um, that would be something I would do time and time and again, kind of going forward. Well, the last thing that I want to talk with you about today is the ISD certification course itself. And um, it's a pretty lengthy process to go through, it's, uh, but I also think it's a fun and challenging process. Uh, is there any takeaways from that that you specifically liked, whether it's from the in-person part or the online course or the portfolio that you're starting to put yes. together? Um, I think I have a little bit more of a unique like perspective. Um, a lot of the cohort are, are classroom teachers. And although I have taught, I'm currently an administrator. And so seeing it from that um, different view has really given me a chance to kind of reconnect with my teachers on that level, on designing, on creating, um, and just empowering them to be innovative. And so um, the takeaways I have are really kind of digging back into writing the lesson plan, but looking at it from a different lens. Um, how are we going to incorporate the different models? Like, how does this fit into SAMR? How are we really um, elevating the use of technology versus just, OK, we're doing it on the Chromebook now. Um, and as far as the portfolio goes, I'm really looking forward to expanding kind of my, my I don't know, presence um, with a professional learning community. Uh, I, that assignment kind of threw me a little bit because I realized exactly how small my reach was as far as accessing the, the resources that are out there. Um, the Twitter assignment, the hashtag assignment, like that's one that really resonated with me so much so that I'm looking forward to doing a similar activity with my staff so they too can experience that. Um, again, Twitter was not a part of my upbringing as a student or even at the beginning um, of my teaching career. So there's been a lot of really amazing takeaways that have given me um, another chance to just step into a teaching role. Um, so thank you for that. Well said. <laughs> I appreciate the time we've had to visit with Christina today. Thank you for joining us for another episode of UENPD TV. If you'd like to join us for another ISTE course, you can go to uen.org forward slash ISTE and make sure to follow us on YouTube as well. <laughs>